Space Bloopers, Episode 1. First up, we've got this short clip from a Russian astronaut supposedly on board the International Space Station looking through the window, filming Elon Musk's SpaceX Dragon as it attempts to dock with the space station. The problem is, just like we've seen in the past, we get layering issues here, as the Dragon capsule and the satellite dish appear to come inside the window and pass the window seal at points. Showing me a blurred image isn't a debunk glance. You need to recreate the scene in the manner in which we're seeing. This is an obvious layering issue. We'll watch it twice on loop. Very similar to the old space shuttle, International Space Station one from back in the day where the International Space Station came in past the window seal of the space shuttle. We'll have a look at that one, a different and another day. Next up, we've got this now infamous clip, which I originally highlighted years ago on my old channel. And of course, what I highlighted here is obvious for all to see. This is supposed to be the space shuttle docked to the International Space Station filmed from the Soyuz rocket as it departs. But when our friend here zooms in, essentially all he's doing is zooming in on one model docked to another model. Look. The space station is bad enough, but look at the space shuttle. The Canada arm, the backs of the, the actual space shuttle, the wings. Look at it, the inside of the cargo bay. It'll come back round. Terrible. Even space fans I've shown this to admit this is a model. But bizarrely enough, they still choose to believe in this tosh. It's crazy. Shows you how deep. This spellcraft works. Blatant model docked to another model. <laughs> now this is a great clip, but I'd never seen this one before till the other day. It's all on Taboo's channel, which originally came from the Zetetic Truth channel. Link in the description to both those guys. And most will be aware that these part of the the deception here is these guys interact with augmented reality things. Things that aren't actually there, but they're there, presented to us, layered in, that these people watch on screens to see what they're interacting with, to fool us, or you know, naive people, I should say, into thinking they're in this environment hurtling around a ball. But quite often things go wrong. The interaction with the augmented uh, item, or whatever it is, in this instance, the water, uh, kind of gives the game away, as we're about to see. Again, it's on loop. Just watch the water's interaction with the bat. This would never, ever happen if this scene was real. This could only ever happen if you're having a special effects issue, just like we're seeing here. Ridiculous, lads. Bearing in mind, the globe is impossible. We can test and verify that for ourselves. All the globe believers are left with is looking away from the Earth 
and, and making huge assumptions about what they see in the sky at the expense of dropping every single demonstration we can test and verify for ourselves. Their assumptions they have regarding the things they look in the sky have no practicality to back it up anyway. You see what insane logic you're dealing with there, just based on space performances here that baffle and bewilder these people. But then when you look at the space stuff, it's just mockery, as I've said for many years. Here we've got Canadian national hero and legend Chris Hadfield on our right in the red top here, being exposed by his own harness. His body language and the way he acts prior to exposing his harness attachments on his back kind of gives the game away anyway. But then when he bends over, you see two points protruding on Chris's lower back, highlighting the attachment points of his harness at play here. I believe NASA use several different types of harnesses with different attachment points to do various different circus tricks depending on what they're doing that day. And Chris is going to show us one of them. Chris? So that's what inspired me, that particular book. Uh, after that, I read lots and lots more that just inspired me further, but that was really the one that set it all off. Oops. Great answer. Why don't we take another question from YouTube? We have a couple. I'm just going to come back. Turn the volume down a smidge, because I'm going to slow it down so it doesn't get too psychedelic. And just watch Chris Hadfield get exposed by his harness in slow motion here. Bending down. And there rise up the two protrusion points, highlighting the attachment points of Chris is uh, his, his harness. This man is supposed to be a hero, but in the real world, he's actually a villain. In this final clip, we get to see a different type of harness attachment point used. We've seen Chris Hadfield's one, at lower back, where there was two points protruding. Like I've previously stated, that I believe they use various different attachments and harnesses for various different circus tricks. In this instance, we get to see the attachment point of this astronaut in the reflection of a tablet in the background there. It's like a white, almost looks like an old phone handset from back in the 80s, but a cream sort of white coloured one. Just going to pause it back, just bring it back a smidge. You want to be looking at the tablet here, hung up on the wall behind him, the reflection of that. Here it comes. See it? Almost like an old telephone, but it's an attachment point on the astronaut's back there. I'm just bringing the bar back and forth there, showing you the reflection. I'll come out. Now you know where it is. You can just watch him be lowered down. And that attachment point, that thing in the reflection, is synced perfectly with him. Highlighting like I just, just stated just now. These guys use various different harnesses and attachment points for various different circus tricks to fool people into believing they're in this certain environment which involves them hurtling round a ball doing ludicrous speeds in a space station. We wouldn't get so many bloopers if that was the case, lads. And if that was the case, you'd have some practicality to back your base claims. You don't. All we're left with is stargazing fantasies looking away from the Earth and space. The stargazing fantasies have no practicality and they're just based on assumptions. And then when you look at space, it's a blooper fest. Have a good one, everyone.